Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. The last time we talked about sewing room organization, we worked on this section of my sewing room, Sunny not included. <laughs> and today I want to talk about another area of my sewing room equally as important as storing notions, and that is how I store my sewing patterns. Here is a little hallway that leads to a bathroom behind my dress form. And in that hallway was some built-in shelving. And so that is where I decided to store my sewing patterns. They are all in these boxes here. These are half file boxes made by In Place. And I got them at Staples. Um, they're cardboard, they come flat like bankers boxes do, and then you fold them up to make a box yourself. And they're perfect for storing patterns because the patterns all fit in there, standing up back to back, which is really cool. Um, I love the boxes, they are perfect, but there's like little to no personality on the boxes whatsoever. So I decided I wanted to make some cute little tags that would represent what kind of patterns are in the corresponding box. I organize my patterns by garment type. So I have separates, I have tops, I have bottoms, I have a category called other which has like accessories like swimsuits and pajamas and stuff like that. I have jackets and outerwear and then I have dresses. So in order to make the gift tags I went to my trusty Cricut maker which also gets stored down here so you can get a view of all of the shelves. Um, but in order to make these, I knew I wanted them to look kind of like gift tags. I knew I wanted them to have some kind of hole in the middle so that I could tie some um, ribbon through them. And I just thought the Cricut Maker would be perfect for that because who likes cutting out circles with scissors? I know I don't. Um, and then I just used some metallic iron-on and some regular black iron-on in order to create the icon and the text that would signify um, what the label represented. So the Cricut Maker was perfect, just as I figured. I have created a design that any of you can use and download. So let me show you how I use the Design Space and Cricut Maker to make these adorable pattern box tags. Okay, when you click the link in the description box below, you will come to a um, canvas in Design Space that looks just like this. And this looks a lot like our label tags look. So let me show you what we're looking at here. We have the um, fabric for the one side that is going to have the icons on it. So for me, that was the pink gingham. Then we have our icons, which were in the gold metallic. Then we have the back, quote unquote, of the tags. This was that like white or cream twill. And then we have the text that goes on each of those. And then the yellow tags are slightly smaller than the rest of them. And this is our interfacing. Okay, and once you're ready to cut out your materials, then you're going to click the Make It button. And this is gonna um, separate everything by material. So this black mat here is gonna have all of your little icons. You will need to mirror those. And then these peach ones here are gonna be fabric number one. Um, if you have a larger mat, a 12 by 24, you can certainly combine these all into one, all into one mat and do one cut that way. This is the text that you're going to need. Again, you'll need to mirror that. And then we have our interfacing and then finally our second fabric. I am going to be doing a companion blog that's going to outline all of this. So don't feel like you need to write it all down or you know memorize any of this. I'm gonna have step-by-step -step in a companion blog for you. I just kind of want to go through it on video so you can 
kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. Um, from there, you're going to continue. So it's got my maker machine recognized. Um, we are working on mat number one indicated here. We need to set our material to iron on since that's what we're doing and make sure that the fine point blade is in the machine, which it wasn't. That was my rotary blade. So you just pop it in. I can do it one handed, super simple. Um, and then you load your mat like so. There's a little arrow flashing indicating loading it. That did not load properly. So we're going to try again. And then the Cricut logo blinks and you just click that and it goes to town. There we go. Not sure if y'all can see. There we go. The cuts that were all made in there. Perfect. Then we go back to our machine here and you can see that it immediately prompts you to move on to number two. So number two is going to be a canvas. So I need to edit the material and I want to go to browse all materials and then I want to search for canvas. And it's got canvas here. So you just select that and click done. And then we need to switch our rotary blade or switch from our fine point blade to our rotary blade. And it's literally this simple. You just pop out one, pop in the other. I can even do it with one hand. And as you guys know, that's typically a struggle for me. <laughs> <laughs> on some tasks. Okay, so I've got my um, canvas fabric here. Super cute. So again, I need to load it up and click the flashing little button. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. From here, I'm going to fast forward through some of the visual tutorial because you're literally just going to repeat what you've already done in order to cut out the text and then the second set of um, fabric and your interfacing following the exact same steps that we just went over. All right, so I have everything cut and weeded. I am in my kitchen now so that I can use the easy press to um, adhere the iron on to the white solid portion of the labels. And then I have all of my little um, clothing images stacked and ready to go on top of the gingham fabric. So I am going to use the reference chart for cotton canvas for the light metallic um, iron-on type. And so I've set my machine to 270 for 40 seconds. And I'm going to apply all of the iron-on vinyl. I've also cut out interfacing and I'm going to apply that to the back sides of this as well. So I will be back after all of that is done. Okay, back in the sewing room now, and I have paired up the image with the text. So dresses with dresses, pants with bottoms, the hat goes with other, this is separates, this is tops, and this is jackets. So you have a couple of options here depending on how finished or whatever you want these to look um, in terms of combining the front and the back together. So your options or the options that I can think of include um, 
going to your regular sewing machine and stitching a quarter of an inch around this edge here and then using pinking shears to pink the edges so that they are that little zigzag and prevent some of the fraying. Um, you can go to your serger and you can serge around all of these edges or you can apply bias tape to all of the edges. You might have some trouble around the corners depending on how good you are with bias tape, but that is certainly an option and will completely enclose your raw edges. I am going to serge all of mine um, using white thread and then for the center circle here, I'm gonna go to my regular machine and set it to zigzag stitch and just like you would machine applique, zigzag all the way around this circle. It's not gonna look um, even and precise and that's okay. Like I'm kind of okay with this looking a little bit crafty and a little bit scrappy. Uh, you could also uh, seal up the raw edges here with some fray check. Um, that's about all I can think of because you can't get pinking shears in here and you can't get a serger in here. So yeah, with that, and remember, you're gonna have your ribbon going through there too. So a lot of that stitching is gonna be hidden. But let me sew these together, wrong sides together, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, they are all completely sewn together. You can see my serge all along the edges and my charming um, zigzag stitch around the hole. Just to make sure that all my serging stitches um, at the ends where I just cut them off um, stayed and didn't start to unravel, I did apply some liquid stitch to all of the five corners. One, two, three, four, oh sorry, six. Six corners. I just put some on my finger and then use my finger to just smoosh it on there and press the threads down so that it kind of gave it a neater finish and that I wouldn't have to worry about the serging stitches unraveling. Okay, and here it is attached to my box. All I did was punch a hole through the lid and then I just tied off a knot in the back. Um, for your tie, I mean, again, you have a lot of freedom here. Um, you can use bias tape, cording, you can use ribbon, you could even use fabric strips. Um, I'm using twill tape because it's what I had on hand and it's nice and sturdy and the color um, coordinated really well. So I'm just tying off um, about a, I guess a four or five inch piece and then just attaching it to my box and it's gonna hang like that. So. The, th the thought behind putting the words on the back was in case it gets flipped over, you would still know what it was. I think I'm gonna place them all with the um, metallic icon on the outside instead of alternating some. I think I'm just gonna use this and maybe one day I'll change my mind and put these on the outside. I don't know. It's really up to you how you want to display either side or both sides of your um, tag. Obviously, the longer that this is, the more likely it will twist and turn around. So if that's a feature that you like, then make your ribbon a little bit longer. All right, and there you have it. Those are my DIY pattern box tags or labels made with my Cricut Maker. I really love them. I think it adds a lot of personality and a lot of color to this section of my sewing room and it makes me smile. I love the gingham, I love the gold, and they're just really sweet and personal, which I love. So hopefully you will get around to making these for yourself. Um, if you have any questions for me about how to make them, please leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to get back to you. But until I hear from you, I'll see you again soon. Bye.